think what are our kids lives going to be like whenever they they grow up and you know they live in this this weird altered world and people keep comparing things to the uh the Spanish influenza outbreak in in the 19 uh 1918 19 early 1900s I don't know <laughs> I'm not a historian but uh <laughs> but they keep comparing it to the Spanish flu but this is much worse and I think it's um it's it's going to change the way that we we see the way that illness can affect us because uh, just, I mean, you know, usually whenever there's some sort of outbreak, it's always, you know, third world countries. And that's where we think it's going to stop because nothing mm-hmm. could ever hit us, you know, like we're above it. It's almost like we're, we're too clean to have something like that happen to us. But here we are with this respiratory illness and it's like, I don't know, it, it's, it brings it home how human we all are and how equal we truly all are. Because, I mean, it doesn't matter how much money you have. If you're going to die from this, you're going to die from it. That's just the way that it is. Yeah. And the the fact of, you know, I, I guess I never even took stock in people that I know. And, and age really was not a factor here. People I know with pre-existing conditions, when I actually sat back and took stock on how many people that is, mm-hmm. you know, it, I realized how many I didn't think about um, that are, you know, of any age range that are high risk. And it's just, it was one of those things where you don't think about it until you have to think about it. And that's kind of, I guess, what scared me. I, I know I, it was very odd. My uh, YouTube rec- recommendations, I don't know if you've read this anywhere, but YouTube's recommendations lately have been a little bit ominous. I uh, One popped up today discussing how uh, like a national blackout was something to be aware of that it could potentially happen. And it was from the Ted talk was from about three years ago. And one of the opening lines, he's listing all of the things that people casually think could maybe happen. And he actually said uh, in the first few opening minutes that like, for example, a global pandemic. And he said, you know, very low risk, very low probability. And it was very odd to see that because, you know, here we are in the middle of it. And he, you know, it was just yeah, was odd to think about how, you know, we we would see it in movies and television. And now it's it's actually a reality. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's really strange to be living in it. I had a conversation with my grandma at the very beginning of this. And um, I actually called her uh, because we she's. uh I don't know if I can say seamstress. A lot of people, crafters, sewists don't like that term because it sort of indicates that you only sew uh, clothing. But she's a she's a sewist and um, she, you know, she's the kind of person I reach out to. She's sort of my mentor about uh, things like that. So I called her and asked her for help um, with our sewing project. But um, in the course of our conversation, I asked her flat out, Grandma, have you ever seen anything like this? Like, is anything is anything comparable to it in your, your experiences? And she said, no, um, I've never been ordered to stay home. Nothing like this has ever happened. And this is a woman, you know, who's seen some things. She's got a long life and, uh, you know, she's not the type that scares easily. She's not the type that gets, you know, worked up over uh shock jocks or what's that called uh like a, a political pundits and, yes uh, yeah um, yeah oh what's the new i, I can't um, think of the term I, I know what you're trying to say too oh um, scare tactic news yeah but she doesn't get worked up over things like that so um the fact that she was a little bit fearful i mean she was very calm and rational about it but um i could just hear in her voice that she knew that this was more serious than a lot of other people were they people at that time weren't really lending a lot of credence to it Mm -hmm. Um, because it was very early on it was before any stay-at-home orders had been issued really in money states I mean I think maybe New York had one but that was it on the west coast or east coast but on the west coast I know uh, California had started in some counties and um, Washington state obviously was locked down but um, it was just like people were still saying, you know, oh, it's not that bad, or it's an overreaction, or it can't make it here. And, you know, just still trying to cling to hope that it wasn't as bad as everyone was trying to say. 
but yeah. she, she sort of cottoned on early and realized that it was. And I trusted her experience more than I trusted what people my own age were saying. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I mean, when you like you touched on, well, first of all, I'm glad you said about the sewist. I didn't realize that that's actually the proper term. I've learned something new there. Well, I don't know if it's the proper term. It's just the term that we've sort of collectively taken on. <laughs> 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 she does she does uh home decor projects and things like that uh and she'll do small alterations to clothes but she doesn't make full clothes so uh, yeah interesting and she quilts she's a big quilter hmm. well, that's like a, a fading talent i that's pretty incredible yeah she's made me some beautiful things huh. um the one thing that you touched on, though, is like, you know, obviously with the longevity of her life, thank God, but she's seen so much in that feeling of seeing people like that in our lives that are, you know, genuinely scared or even just cautiously optimistic. People I expected to be big down players, yeah. so to say, mm -hmm. have been the most proactive people. And it's been a very shocking reality. Exactly. It almost like makes it hit home faster when you see these people behaving the way they are. Um, Cause you're thinking they're going to be the guys tearing people's face masks off at Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> they end up being the ones who are, you know, more grave and more um, calmly worried. And that, yeah. anytime someone's calmly worried, it makes me a lot more worried <laughs> because I realize that they're not panicking that they're, they, they have, long sight and they're seeing something down the road that you know that you're fearing but you don't want to believe could be the case yeah yeah i think you're right it's it's almost more unsettling because of their their experience and and mm -hmm. like you said they're seeing something more than the the what the media tells you or what some stranger on facebook tells you i'll tell you what facebook has become <sighs> A very, very toxic place to be right now. I don't know about you. I know in the beginning, you know, with the project that you're working on with uh, uh, the masks, I know you had used Facebook for promotion of that, which was awesome. Have you <laughs> used it much for social interaction? No, not at all. I'm not. <laughs> I, I go on every once in a while. I went on for Easter. I did a, a Facebook Live of our um, our Easter egg hunt. And that was oh. really great because the grandmas got to see it and all the aunts and uncles. And, um, but that's really all I've used it for since this happened, because every time I log on, even just to check comments on, uh, like, like you said, my, uh, my posts about making face masks and trying to like rally support and rally other people to make them. Uh, it's like, I have to dodge bullets of all these crazy <laughs> conspiracy theories and uh, all kinds of just, insane people and their crazy logic that doesn't make any sense <laughs> it's, it's nuts that that world that people live in is something else i don't know <laughs> it's amazing i just i love the one thing that i have noticed which I, similar to you i uh as the former easter bunny at one of my <laughs> previous employees employers that you're aware of i i did a, a quick throwback to that and just you know kind of gave cdc based guidelines you know not, <laughs> not stephen stephen jay's point of view on what you should do um as a little bit of a funny joke and i was realizing that people that were doing throwback photos were actually having to in the comments or in the captions designate that group photos of previous years were from previous years because the facebook police yeah, pounding them in the comments of their own like family photos, and I was like, "Yeah, the, I'm gonna, I'm gonna check out for a little bit here. I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna take a step back. <laughs> time to hit the old dusty trail. <laughs> this is not the place for me to be. 